In this video, we're going to be going over the features and capabilities of ICMizer 2. And we're going to teach you how to use ICMizer to figure out the correct play for a situation so you can improve your poker game. ICMizer is a pre-flop poker analysis tool for sit and go, spin and go, MTT, and cash game players. It helps in situations when you're facing an all-in or when you're considering going all-in yourself. These situations are really common in short stack games or late stages of the tournament, but they also come up when you're in three and four bet pots. Let's take a look at one of the simple examples of these situations where ICMizer is useful. So here we have a four-handed table and we're in the big blind. Let's say we're facing an all-in bet from the small blind who's pushing about 40% of all hands. After we have this all set up, we can hit the calculate button. And here we can see that ICMizer has calculated the EV for every individual hand and then taken all of the ones that are showing a positive expectation and put them in green so we can tell which hands we should be playing. So ICMizer is answering the question of which hands can be profitably played in this situation for an all-in. This isn't limited to just open push and call open push situations and instead can handle anything from facing limps to facing raises or re-raises or even facing open shoves uh, before the action gets to you. Now, of course, not all situations are the same. So let's take a look at the variables we need to account for when analyzing a hand in ICMizer. On the main window, we have the number of players, which you can select from this dropdown, and we also have the blind level. If the particular blind level you're at in the hand isn't accounted for in this dropdown, you can add one by clicking the Create New button and entering it here. You can also see in this blinds dropdown there's the option to tick or untick small blind. And this is for when there's a dead small blind in the hand. Now let's click on the tournament configuration button at the top left. This opens the tournament configuration pop-up. At the top we can choose from showing our results in ICM percent EV or ICM dollar EV. This is what you're going to be using if you're analyzing a tournament situation. Percent EV is percent of total prize pool and dollar EV is just your dollar expectation. To the right of that, you can select from chip EV or chip big blind EV, and this is what you'll be using if you're playing something like a heads up sit and go, heads up at the end of a tournament, or a cash game. To the far right of that, we have the FGS tick, which is future game simulation on or off. And you can see that we have that on the button outside for quick access. Below all of this, you can see selecting from different poker networks and different formats within those networks. So for example, if this hand were a 6-max turbo, you could click here. Or if you were analyzing a hand played in the Sunday Million, you could click here. If the format you're playing isn't listed anywhere in here, you can create new. And then you can give a name to your new tournament. You can select what format it is and what the blind structure is say it's an MTT sit and go hyper format, choose the poker network. You could choose to display this in terms of money or percentage based. And then you can list your prize pool. Once you click add new, it'll be available in the dropdown and it will be there whenever you need it. After setting the number of players, the blinds, and the format, the variables we need to account for are the stack sizes of all the players at the table, the action that happened in the hand, and the ranges at play. For setting the stack sizes, you can enter them here in this tab. It's important if you're playing a tournament to exactly enter the stacks as they were at the table, because ICM depends on knowing the exact stack setups of every player at the table, not just the shortest stack, which is the case for cash games or heads up. To set the action of a player, you can click on his action box. You can manually enter the amount that he is raising to. You can use a slider, or you can use these buttons to increase or decrease the amount of his bet by the size of one small blind. You can set his action to fold, call, raise to the amount that you select here, or just quickly have him go all in. Okay, so those would be all of the variables that we need to consider if we're going to analyze a hand played on a single table. 
but sometimes you're playing a multi-table tournament and it's important to keep track of how many players are remaining in the tournament and what their stack sizes are in order to get a correct ICM response for the question that you're asking. So what we have here is this MTT tick box that we can check, which brings open the MTT configuration box. Here you can set the number of remaining players, the average stack size, and the total chips in play. Uh, you can select between random or manual, and when you're in manual mode you can change the stack distribution according to these sliders for short stack and big stacks. Uh, you can also manually enter different stacks if you happen to have that information uh, available to you. And you can do that over all of these tables that get generated. And the more players that you have, obviously, the more new tables will be generated to represent all of those different stacks that are in the tournament. At the bottom here, you'll see uh, how many short stacks, how many medium, and how many big stacks are remaining in the tournament. And you can keep this activated if you want to have your uh, ICM results reflect the number of players in the tournament. Or you can untick it if you don't want to use that. In the next part of this video, we'll be going over the ranges section of ICMizer, explaining which ranges ICMizer is asking you for, and showing you how to edit those ranges into ICMizer. So here I've set up a four-way spot where Hero is on the button considering an open push into the small blind and the big blind. I set this to chip big blind EV uh, rather than ICM since it will require me to input less ranges, which should make it a little bit simpler for the video. So the first range that we're looking at at the top here, P, is for the pusher. Uh, as a question mark right now because we don't know the answer to this. Uh, the ranges we see below that are the small blinds calling range against a push. So we can set that here. And the range directly under that, labeled O, is the overcall range of the big blind after the small blind is called. Next to that, we have the range for big blind calling our button shove once the small blind folds. And we can set that here. And now we can hit calculate. And that's our result. Now let's set up another situation where, let's say the cutoff has pushed and we're considering a call and looking at the overcalls ahead. So the first thing we're going to need to do is put in the pusher's range, which is the cutoff here. Then we're going to look at what's going to happen after Hero makes the call. So these two O's represent overcall after the cutoff pushes and the hero calls. So this will be uh, for small blind, cutoff push, hero call, small blind overcall. And we can set that range. And then for the big blind, it will be cutoff push, hero call, big blind overcall. And we can set that range. And we can calculate. Now for chip EV, these are pretty straightforward. We're not very concerned with what's going to happen after we fold. But once we go into ICM EV, we become very concerned with what happens after we fold. So you see here that just by changing the uh, format to ICM EV rather than chip EV, we've included all these new ranges here that are important for ICMizer to know in order to give us a result. So the first section is the same as the chip EV. We want to know what the cutoff pushing range is, and then we want to know what the overcalls are going to be once we call. These ranges after, labeled under hero folds, are obviously the ranges we're concerned about once hero folds. So this one would be small blinds and call against the cutoffs push, and we can set that here. And the O under that is big blinds over call after the small blind calls the cutoff push and the hero had folded. And then to the right of that would be the big blind call when the cutoff pushes, hero folds, small blind folds, and action is on that big blind. And here we see that result. So ICM definitely cares about the action that happens after we fold because it's very important for us to know that if one player is going to be busting out of the tournament more frequently uh, or not. 
So for example, we can see the range here is 7.1% uh, as the ranges lay for the hero. But without changing anything about what happened to the cutoff push or what's going to happen once the hero calls the cutoff push, we can just widen out these two ranges that happen after the hero folds. And our 7.1% turns to 5.4%. Now that's a small number of overcalls, so let's set up one more situation with a few more players so we can see what's going on when we're, we're looking at uh, quite a few more overcalls, and uh, not all of them fit on the screen here. So if we're looking at uh, an open push from this position, uh, this early position here, we can see that there's still all of the calls against Hero's push, and then uh, the overcalls are missing. You get to what happens after the Hero folds and hijack pushes and people call him, uh, but the overcalls are missing here. What happens is there's just too many of them to fit on that screen, so what it, happens is they get moved over to this overcall section. So you click on this tab and that brings this up. Now within this tab there's going to be a tab for the hero push uh, with calls and then uh, the overcalls and then there will be one for the hijacks push, the cutoff, and the button. So let's take a look through here starting with the hero. Uh, when hero pushes hijack can call and then we can assign the overcalls here. We don't need to worry about uh, editing this hijack call because we will be doing that uh, in this section here. So we can, for instance, change this range and then bring it over here and it'll it'll already be updated. Uh, and then we can set the overcalls of players beneath. Uh, and you can repeat this process for uh, every player ahead. All right. Now, obviously, this is a lot of ranges to have to manage. And while it's important to make sure that you set up your situations to be as close to the real game that you were playing as possible, so you can get the correct answers from ICMizer, if you were to spend your time going through each individual range and updating them, you probably wouldn't be getting a lot of studying done for your time. But there's a cool trick utilizing another one of ICMizer's features to help speed this up. The Calculate Nash Equilibrium button will solve for what we like to call a toy game, where every player in the tournament has the option of either folding or going all in and nothing in between. For deeper stack situations, this isn't going to be all that helpful, but for a lot of tournament situations or short stack situations in general, this is going to be extremely helpful and usually pretty close to how the games are actually played. So what you do is you click this button and you wait for ICMizer to solve the Nash equilibrium. Once done, as we can see here, all of the ranges, including overcall ranges, have been updated to reflect the Nash equilibrium for this push fold game. I would still suggest going through and changing most of the ranges on this main ranges tab because they're going to have a very big effect on the result of the calculation. Most importantly, the calls versus hero push and the pushing ranges once hero folds. And if there's any calling range after a push once hero folded, that look like they're very different than what you would expect the opponents in your games to be doing, those should be changed too. But for the most part, any of the overcall ranges aren't going to have a very huge effect on the results of the hand, unless they're drastically wider than what they are here. Usually you're not going to see that. And there's actually a tool in ICMizer to help you visualize how much of an effect changing one range has on our decision. You can click on the Charts button and then select a range. Here we're going to pick the cutoffs calling range versus hero push. And this brings open the hand EV chart tab. On the Y axis, we have the EV difference of the hero's push. And on the X, we have the cutoffs calling range from 0 to 100. By mousing over any of the dots on the screen, you can look to the bottom of this window and see the result for that percentage of calling range. So here, if the opponent is calling 43%, Hero's EV difference for pushing is plus $59.44. You can choose from different rankings, but I personally like using the power call ranking. Now we can click on the range chart tab. Here we can see a graph of Hero's perfect response ranges to the different calling ranges of the cutoff. On the Y axis we have the Hero's range, and on the X the cutoff's range. 
And finally, we can click on the result tab, which we've seen before, every hand listed with its EV. And one of these buttons at the bottom here, share this result, gives you a link that you can copy to your clipboard and send to somebody else if you want to share the scenario with them. All of the variables are accounted for now. We can get into some of the finer details of the features. Uh, first thing we have here is the reset all bets button, which can reset all of the uh, all of the actions at the table. So let's say, for instance, that we had set up a spot where somebody raised and somebody went all in uh, before our action. We could click on this button and it would take that away. Uh, that'll be handy sometimes when you're going through a lot of situations manually. We have the paste hand history and load hands or tournaments function, which will allow you to open a file with all of the hand histories or paste multiple hand histories into it and open them up. And we'll show you that now with a little hand history that we have here. So we can just select this text, copy and paste hand history and see it here. Uh, we can click on these cards to select a new hand for hero. And from here, when you have multiple hand histories loaded, you'll be able to use these buttons to navigate uh, back and forward one hand or use these far off buttons to navigate to the very first hand or the very last hand that you have. Uh, you can copy the information of the hand history so you can uh, paste it into a notepad or something like that if you wanted to for that one particular hand. And then next to that button, you have this replay button, which shoots it over to the iSumizer 2 replayer. And you can visualize the hand here. Uh, it's very, very neat looking. Uh, and you can see that it also includes uh, the big blind amounts of all of the stacks and just pretty cool looking. So that should just about wrap it up for this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you enjoy using iSumizer 2.